Every rig in the HMP fleet can expose you to potentially deadly hazards. Buffer zones, barriers, and barricades are designed to help protect you from these exposures. Always refer to HMP's Buffer Zones and Barricades Procedure document for up-to-date information and procedures. This document includes information about buffer zones and barricades during both drilling operations and rig moves. A buffer zone is an area surrounding a hazardous item or procedure that provides enough distance to keep you safe from the exposure. A barrier is a physical device used to make entry into a high-risk buffer zone impossible. A barricade is a physical device used to mark the boundary of a high-risk buffer zone and should be treated as if it were a barrier. The barricades we use on our rigs are colored chains, plastic tape, panels, cones, and rails. They define the buffer zones for stationary exposures. However, when the exposure is not stationary, such as a vehicle that is in motion, then the buffer zone does not have a physical barrier defining it. HMP requires a 15-foot buffer zone around wheeled and tracked vehicles that are in motion. It's up to you to stay at least 15 feet from moving vehicles, but when handling tubulars, personnel will stand back at a safe distance from the tubular equal to or greater than the length of the tubular, 30 feet for drill pipe and 45 feet for casing. The color of the barricade chain, tape, or panel is important to understand. When these barricades are yellow, they define areas that can be entered with caution only after being briefed by your supervisor. When the chain, tape, or panels are red, no access is allowed. Only authorized personnel may enter these spaces after the appropriate permit to work has been completed. Another important aspect of buffer zones, barriers, and barricades is that some are in place anytime the rig is on location, and some are temporary. Many critical operations will demand that you install temporary barricades that identify exposures that are only in place during the specific operations. Once the operation has been completed, the barricade can be taken down and stored appropriately. Yellow barricades will be installed around the following. Reserve or open top pits and the work area behind the backyard when trucks or equipment are being operated. The flare stack. All well sellers on site. The emergency descent line anchor. The catwalk or PDS. The rig floor during rough drilling and jarring stuck pipe operations. The red barricades that all rig classes share are the BOP deck and floor during BOP testing, cementing, and wire line logging. All lines and trucks used during these operations, including third party, are no access areas. On Flex 3 rigs, red barricades are also used to identify potential serious incident or fatality exposures for electrical conduits around the skid system drag chain and the MCC. On walking Flex 3 rigs, red barricades are also used to identify potential serious incident or fatality exposures for electrical conduits around the DS mid-box, the DW mid-box, the upper MCC box, the MCC J box, and the boom box connection. On Flex 5 rigs, Barricades are also used to identify potential serious incident or fatality exposures for electrical conduits around the MCC, the upper MCC, and the skid system drag chain. There are occasions when barricades and buffer zones are needed for special circumstances. Most of these are needed during rig moves, but some are needed during regular drilling operations as well. For instance, any time there is a damaged or missing guard around an exposure, a red barricade should be used around the exposure until the guard can be repaired or replaced. And there may be times when you need to work in the vicinity of suspended loads. In this case, 
The buffer zone should be equal to the height of the equipment being lifted. Tag lines are always required to be used on suspended loads, and these tag lines must be long enough to keep you out of the suspended load buffer zone whenever possible. You already know about the 15-foot minimum buffer zone around wheeled or tracked vehicles, but when a winch or bridle line is used, the buffer zone must be no less than the length of this line in case it snaps or releases unexpectedly. When raising or lowering skids, the minimum buffer zone is equal to the footprint of the equipment being handled. If there's a working crane on your rig site, anytime it's working, a buffer zone should be established inside the counterweight, boom, and load swing radius. And there should always be a flagger present. When the mast is laid down during rig moves, a 20-foot buffer zone is maintained until the mast is trailered or raised. When your rig must operate in the vicinity of overhead power lines, install a red barricade marking a 20-foot buffer zone. The barrier locations chart in the change house and the driller's cabin will show you where all regular buffer zones, barriers, and barricades are located. Refer to these location charts and h and standards and guidelines for your rig's specific barriers and buffer zones.